Well, hello, boys and girls. Here's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna get we're gonna get three things under our belt, all with uh, inverse functions. Let's do it. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's see here. There we go. So things we're gonna learn today. If uh, you're gonna find out what inverse functions are, what the big idea is, you're gonna figure out how, how they're written, what the notation is. So if you see this funky looking written thing, you'll know what it means, because this is not too big of a concept. This can get confusing if you don't know what it means, so it's really important. And then the last one is like, how can you determine if two functions are really inverse or not? So, uh, first of all, uh, two functions are inverse. So, for example, let's say we had f of x, and let's say we had another function, g of x, right? Well, you know how if I had the function f, if I put an a in, uh, that would be the input, and you know how this is the output, right? Well, if I took the other function, if this was an inverse, this would be switched, do you see? This is now the in, and that's the out. That's the big idea right there. For inverse functions, input and output are switched. It's kind of a big notion. I didn't write it down here for the sake of, you know, time for the video, but if you're at home trying to learn this and you didn't know that, you should probably write it down. Inverse functions. A function and its inverse. What happens is the input and the output get switched. Pause it, write it down. Yeah, yeah. So, here, let me give you an example. Let's say we had uh, 3x minus 7. Do you see? Um, and then let's say we had another function that was x plus 7 divided by 3. Turns out these two are inverse. Let me show you why. Uh, let's pick a number like 2. So if I plug 2 in right here, I get 2 times, sorry, I get 3 times 2, right? 3 times 2, sorry my ugly handwriting got even worse, minus 7. So that would be 6 minus 7, so f of 2 would be equal to negative 1. Would you guys agree with that? Negative 1. Now, watch what happens if I put negative 1 into here. I get negative 1 plus 7 over 3. Well, that's 6 over 3, which is 2. So g of negative 1 is 2. You see how they switch? This is the inverse of that. That's the big idea right there. And you can use that to actually figure out things about um, inverse functions, a function and its inverse. Sometimes you, well, anyway, we'll, we'll skip, we'll hold that for later. So, big idea. A function and its inverse, they get switched. Do you see? So these two, we already said these two are inverse. The way an inverse is written, let's say we are starting with this function right here. Let's say that's the parent function, f of x. Its inverse would be written like this right here. You see that little superscript of a negative one? That's actually not an exponent in this situation. That right there is not an exponent. That means inverse. This is the inverse, which means the opposite, and this is the OG, the original. Do you see? So, when you see that, you know what it's saying is that this is the inverse of that. Now, here's how you can tell. Because uh, this would have to work every single time for all numbers. So, there's a way you can tell. Both of these things would have to work. Oops. Here, I'm going I'm to do that on the other side. Here, so we got some room. Here's how you tell. So you tell if two functions f and f inverse are really inverse or not. So they have this property that if you did the composition of functions each way, and you did it and you simplified it, the output would be x. But it would have to work both ways. So let's talk about that. So what we just said is, well here, let me give you an example. Let's say, let's say we had f of x equaled 2x plus uh, Five. Well, its inverse, which I'll show you how to find in the next video, would be x minus 5 divided by 2. Next lesson, we'll talk about that. So let's say we had these two functions right here. Here's what this is saying. Both of these have to work. What it's saying is if you do the composition where you take the inverse and you plug it in to the original, and you do the simplification, the output is x. Also, if you do it the other way, where you take the original and plug it into the inverse, the output is x. 
if both of those are true, then these are in fact inverse. So let's check if these are really inverse or not. So let's do this one right here. So 2 plus 5. Let's see what that equals. Now, see what I did? I took 2 parentheses plus 5. So now i got to take this function, plug it in, right? Here, this is 2 over 1, those reduce, so you're left with x minus 5 plus 5. Well, that right there is just 0, so you're left with x. So we could say that this is true. You see, when I did the composition of functions this way, taking the inverse and plugging it into the original, my output was x. So now let's try it the other way. Let's take this function and plug in the original. Now you got to make sure you follow the order of operations. You can't reduce those first. It doesn't work that way. Uh, there's nothing in holding these things in the parentheses. There's number, no number outside. There's no exponent. So they're just there to help us with the substitution. So you see these two right there? Those make 0. So you're left with 2x over 2, which does reduce to just x. So it worked both ways. Man, that's pretty fancy right there, right? So uh, here's some practice problems. Why don't you try these? Why don't you determine if these are actually inverse? So let's say we had, mm, oh, let's say, hmm. 3x and x over 3. And let's say we had that for these three. See if those three actually are inverse or not. Anyway, that's some good practice for you right there. Hope this has been helpful. Talk to you later.